Hey guys, I'm Vernon Kidder, coming to you again, how's everybody doing out there? As always, um, the king is here, no I'm just messing with you guys, um, back again for another comic review, the countdown is still going on with to my 100th episode, um, which will be live, so I hope you guys will stay tuned for that, um, shout out to my mentor and bro, uh, Blue Goblin, as always. Um, and shout out to Bravo Team, YouTube is 3 Bravo Team, uh, they did their first uh, live group session last night, it was great, I'm so proud of the team, that um, the extension of the YouTubers core, my group, and that's Bravo Team, Bravo Team did a good job, I'm hoping to see next time their full team there. Um, but it was it was a blast to see. Check out their channel, subscribe to them, no problem. Also, show some love and respect to the Dark Avenger Inc. family as well. Um, as for prior to what I'll be putting on Dark Avenger Inc. for reviews, um, Katana will be going up there. Uh, so check out what I thought about the second issue of Katana. Um, we had we basically said farewell to two great series yesterday and uh, if you want to see my thoughts on that uh, just go to my main channel and check it out but other than that the comics right what is the kid have for the comics so I got a few books and uh, first of all we'll kick it off in Marvel and uh, we're gonna take it off with uh, oh, go back player. Age of Ultron uh, this is book number two uh, Bendis um, and Hitch do uh, Hitch doing the artwork, Bendis doing the writing. Um, it's still we're seeing that Ultron has hit everywhere. It's not just New York; it's everywhere. We're seeing basically how what happened with how Spidey got captured, as well as two of the members here on the cover, Moon Knight. Mark Spector and uh, Black Widow, and we see something bad happen to Black Widow. Black Widow, what happens to her is, Jesus Christ, was just crazy. And they're in San Francisco, actually, so it was, it, it was a little bit different. But still, it's to the point of like, you're looking at this book, but you're you're like, okay, when is somebody going to come up with a plan? Because now it seems like it's just their means of survival. And um, it's it's really it's really sad to see the the Marvel heroes in that that kind of stick and stature, you know that that. But hopefully, but someone does come up with a plan. I'm not going to spoil who that was. You just have to read it for yourself. And uh, yeah, Age of Ultron, no, book number two. Okay, so we move on to uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick, Miss Kelly Sue DeConnick. On uh, Avengers Assembled number thirteen, uh, yeah, that's that's Black Widow on the cover with a half lizard face. Um, this book is still telling some of the the backstories of like the people when Black Widow was still with you know the KGB and people she took out, and that's what this is dealing with. Um, some of her markers, as she's she's calling it, and in a sense, is she trying to redeem herself? for those bad things she did or you know is she trying to atone for those you know atonement in a sense uh, but she gets into a matter of you know there's individuals that are working with these uh, kind of like a similar lizard formula that Kirk Connors has dealt with but it's in the term of the daughter of someone that Black Widow killed and of course Hawkeye and Spider-Woman are there to help her out but it's a very good story. Kelly Sue DeConnick still does a very good job um, with telling uh, the story. I'm forgetting who was the artist. Um, I'm just gonna check real quick. Uh, we have we have Pete 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 Woods and Mark Bagley uh, doing the artwork in this, so that was really good. Um, but it was a good stuff. It was really good, really good indeed. All right. So we move on to. Fearless Defenders number two 
uh, as my mentor, as Galvi would say, <laughs> a Danny Moonstar action figure. Yeah, <laughs> on the cover. I thought th I think this is a really cool cover. Um, I love the cover. That's that's Mark uh, Mark Brooks his artwork, as you can see. Um, get a good look at that glare on their way glare. Um, sorry, my room is really bright. Um, you got Misty Knight, Valkyrie, and Danny Moonstar, aka uh, formerly known as Mirage, on the cover. So we're getting to the in, the the details of what is really the purpose of this book. Darkness is arising in a sense, and the All Mothers. It's up to Valkyrie to put together the. Uh, what are they called again? The, the um. They're called the. Valkyries has to put together a group. They're called the um. That she, they're named are the uh. Come on, what's the name of it? Um. Uh, Valkors, basically, and um, Valkyrie. We've seen that it's been, she's trying to do that. She did try to do that. I really love the chemistry between Valkyrie and Misty Knight, as well as the doctor who is there, who has a big crush on Valkyrie. And I love that scene where she's like, Valkyrie, can we talk about, and she's like, oh, you want to talk about that kiss? And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, it happens a lot. I thought that was really funny. Do we see Danny Moonstar in the, yes, we do see her. And we see her being just who she is, that Cheyenne warrior that we we, we love of her. Um, taking out people with her bow and arrow was really good, um, but she something bad happens to her at first. Not going to spoil what happens to her, but um, it was fun. Uh, we also get to see a certain character that I thought was definitely going to be in the book, and I was right. Um, and also we get to see someone else at the end of the book, which I won't spoil. You just have to figure out, see for yourself. Um, pick up Fearless Defenders, people. I guarantee you, you'll love it. And other than that, let's move on to the next. All right, and we move on to Secret Avengers. This is number two. Nick Spencer, Luke Ross doing the artwork. Um, this is basically all about Nick Fury Jr. I'll never get comfortable saying that name. Basically, break going into Bengala and breaking out Taskmaster, uh, pretty much. And they want Taskmaster on this job. Um, they want him part of the group. Um, also, we also get to see a new mem another member of the team, which I'm going to spoil for you. We finally get to see Mockingbird. She she makes her debut in the book, um, which is really fun to see. Um, I'll show you where she here where she is. Um, where is she? I'll show you. Here she is. She's in disguise. That's her right there, Mockingbird. Really good to see Bobby. Um, so it's it's really gonna be interesting to see how Hawkeye, Clint, and his ex-wife Bobby work together. That's gonna be really fun. Um, but uh, it was it was really good. Uh, we also got to see some villains in here that we haven't seen in a while, like Graviton. It was really good to see Graviton in here. I was like, wow, Graviton. But all this mainly is about is getting to Taskmaster so they can offer him a position on the team, but also something more than just a position on the team. Uh, but I still enjoyed it. Excuse me. It still had that very good espionage feel to it. You know, shh, hush, hush you know, feel that I like. I thought Nick Spencer did a very good job at uh, what he was given. And uh, next, the next uh, member of the, they're going to introduce is the new Iron Patriot. And I'm wondering who that is. I pray that is not Rhodey. I'm praying that's not Rhodey. Praying that's not Rhodey. All right. So uh, next up we go to Thor, God of Thunder, uh, Jason Aarons, and uh, this is issue number six, and Bruce Gwich, I hope I'm saying his name right, is the artist on this. Basically, guys, what this is, is the story of Gorg, the God Butcher. Um, 
how he became who he is. And, and we get a really good in-depth story of why he hates gods and why he wants to kill them and what was his drive to doing it. He comes from this world that is pretty much almost like desert wasteland it, and it's always a means of survival whether it's food, water, everything. We get to see his mother back then, everything. There are a lot of harsh memories that he's telling and story. the storytelling is very very sad and at some point you want to feel for Gorg. You're like oh man, you know he's been through a lot a little, give him a little sympathy, but it also tries to get you a means of trying to support him in a, a way. Not just look at him as a bad guy, but get a little bit in depth of like, you know what? Feel for the character. He, you know, he's not all that bad. You kind of understand him. Look, fill his shoes and understand why he hates gods, in a sense. But I don't. I don't know, I ain't that way, but we do see him butcher a god in here, a fellow Asgardian, which I'm not going to spoil who it was, but let me just tell you right now, I'll give you a clue, it's one of the Warriors 3, there you go, but it was good, um, but we're getting, but the next story arc, which is called God Bomb, is going to kick back off, and uh, Aaron's and, uh, Elrich is going to come back for the, the artwork. But it was a good, you know, just a story to understand, origin story for Gore. Alright, so we move on to Wolverine and the X-Men, number 26. Uh, Jason Aaron's, again, does a very good job. Perez's artwork was... But we're... This is still telling the story of Dog, Wolverine's brother. Now, for all those who've never read the graphic novel Origin, which basically, basically uh, tells the origin of Wolverine when he grew up, when he was young, and everything like that. When you know how he met Rose, his first love, and Dog here, and pretty much in this book, Dog has come back to basically, not in a sense torment his brother, but more like showcase that he's better than him in a sense. And that's pretty much this base of this book is. I mean, Wolverine doesn't want to kill his brother. He's like, don't make me put you down and everything like that. But almost in a sense, Dog is prepared for a lot of things in this book. Um, he, he's, he's prepared for Wolverine. It's really good. Like a lot of, he's using a lot of high-tech stuff. Um, like, like maces that are made out of adamantium. He's got all kinds of things in here. And he's just here to really kind of one-up his brother in a sense. We also, they, for all those who never read it, you get a kind of an in-depth story of Dog. I love how they did like the flashbacks, like it felt like vintage, and I can't believe I just used that word, but yeah. Um, you, you, you can see it's like, basically like, things like that. But other than that, it was, it was still good. Um, Aaron still does a remarkable job with this title. And this is only what part two of four of Savage Land Learnings, but other than that, it's good. All right, so we that's all the mark. Let's move on to DC, and we're gonna kick it off with Requiem, of course, with the first. And we're talking about Batgirl. Batgirl, I like that cover, very nice cover. Um, you see Barbara, she's crying, and the, the Robin in the back. Um, uh, Ray Fox and Daniel uh, Sap Prayer is the artwork. No mis no disrespect to you, Mr. Fox, but I want Gail, I want Gail Simone back. <laughs> you know, yes, I'm a Gail Simone fanboy. I'm not even going to deny that. But he, what he does a good job in this book. Basically, in this book, it's we see that still that creepy vibe, kind of between Barbara and James Jr., her brother. Um, God, he's just coming off really creepy in this book. Um, almost like taboo incest. It's just really just creepy. In the beginning of the story, Barbara gets a building dropped on her. And she survives it. Which is just gives you just... You're just like, 
Way to go, Babs. But still, it's that creepy incest between Barbara and her brother. It's just, just, just like, oh, this is so creepy. Um, her, uh, Commissioner Gordon does notify her about what happened to Damien and everything like that. And in a sense, guys, uh, she, she, she feels, but she can't really deal with it too much put too much incest into it like you know but she tries to contact Dick he's too busy he's busy and she doesn't contact Bruce but still it was good to see they gave a little bit of notion like you know Robin's dead you know things like that and you know she but it was still good and it's just it's just this really creepy cat and mouse game between Barbara and her brother which which is really good storytelling too but I can't wait till Miss Simone comes back on the book. And uh, like I said, no disrespect to any writer that's writing the book while Miss Simone is away. But I need Lady Simone back on the book. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I'm a fanboy. Whatever. Okay. Um, so we keep we move on to um, Batman number 18. Uh, Scott Schneider and those Kubert brothers. We got Andy Kubert on this. Um, there, there are a couple of people that are artists, but Andy Kubert's one of them. And this is very good. Greg Capullo, you see him with Robin's boots and the Robin right there. Oh, uh, yeah. And this is part of record. Basically, in this book, it is exactly what I said was going to happen after Damien died. It was going to be what happened to Jason Todd 3.0. Bruce is going nearly crazy. He is he is overworking himself. He hasn't slept in a week. He's just out there in the streets just doing what he thinks he needs to do. He's he's putting a little bit of more of a hurt lock on a lot of just minor muggers and people like that. Harper Rowe is in this and she's seeing this and she's like I can't let him go down this road because he's he's gonna keep going down this road. He's gonna get killed, and it's not gonna be it's gonna be some average Joe that's gonna be able to kill him because he's getting reckless, he's getting sloppy, and and Harper looks at Batman as an inspiration to keep moving on, to keep strong, and everything like that. Not for just for her, but for her brother and things like that. And you know we see that with Bruce, and this was just really good storytelling by. Um, Scott Schneider, he does a very good job on this. I was very impressed by this. This really, really meant a lot, especially if you're a Batman fan. You can really appreciate this storytelling right here because it was really, it wasn't somebody in the Bat family that was telling Bruce, hey, look, you got to stop, Bruce. You're going to kill yourself if you don't. It was somebody else, somebody who looks at Bruce as an inspiration. And I love that. I thought that was really well done. And uh, very good. So we move on to uh, Green Lantern Corp. number 18. <laughs> Death to all the John Stewarts. John Stewart is always in in the, the heart of the hurricane. Uh, heart, uh, heart, the eye of the storm. He is always there. And in this book, it's no different. The the basically the uh, the first land because this is part six of the Wrath of First Land is just torturing John and Fatality of the you know the uh, Star Sapphires. And as always, the first land is just twisting a lot of memories of John and. John's fighting it. He's trying to fight it. He's really trying to fight what you know what's going on. He's saying, "No, that's not how it happened. I didn't do that. No, don't stop twisting. You leave my mother out of this and everything like that." And it's just getting really dire for John and Fatality. Um, it's it's Peter Tomasi does a very good job, and Chris Cross, who does the artwork in it, was really good. Um, but you just see a lot of things that are going on throughout you know, John's life from the past to the present that just not just recently happened 
and the and um what's his name um I'm forgetting the first lantern's name already because he's not basically look at when I look at this guy's first I'm not really that impressed to be honest with what's going on with the first lantern I'm thinking it was gonna be straight up dire need for the the core and I'm just getting kind of a uh, in a sense, a mock Hannibal Lecter vibe from the first land. That's that's just me. But other than that, you know, he's just playing. He's just toying with John Stewart and Fatality. But it was Peter Tomasi still does a very good job with Green Lantern Corps. All right. So we move on to the last DC book. Um, like I said, the other DC. Go to Dark Avenger Inc. Plus to review and see what I thought about issue number two of Kitana. Um, that's where, exclusively, that's where that book is going to be. Um, but here we go. Let's move on to two more issues before this series comes to an end. Um, and that is none other than The Ravengers. This is issue number ten. I like that cover of Terra on the cover. Terra on the cover looks really nice. Um, they, I love that that they were never prepared for what's come next. Um, the plot of this book is uh, Michael Allen Nelson and dialogue by Tony Bedard. Um, basically, in this book, the Ravengers, after all they've been through, they're finally getting some downtime, and they're really reconnecting with each other, they're smiling, they're having fun, you know, Beast Boy and Terra, they play tonsil hockey, they, they, they're going out now, they're going steady, you know, um, um, a lot of things are happening, but however, um, basically, uh, it's not going to look so good for, um, uh, for the team because Harvest as you can see right here look who he's hired now Slade Wilson aka Deathstroke so Deathstroke now is being employed by Harvest not only to deal with the Ravengers but also to deal with two rogue his rogue agents Rose Wilson and Warblade um, but we get a very good in depth into what's going on. Like for example, you know, like I said, the team is just having fun, and uh, Ridge, we find something happens to Ridge. You know, the big salamander-like guy. But here's the kicker: we find out that Ridge is not a man. He wasn't a man turned to salamander like this big lizard guy. He's actually a little boy, a little British boy right there and he turns back into his, his normal self and he's like crikey you can see right here crikey and he's um they're just like that and they're just like wow you ridge you were you're actually a little boy nobody and he's like you got any legos i want to play with legos i'm like okay that's funny however we also get to see um thunder gets uh his sister back uh, lightning returns. There she is, right here. She she comes back. We thought she died, but she she returned. Um, and it it looks like it's just it looks like it's gonna end on a happy note, guys, for uh, the Ravagers in this issue. But it doesn't. And I'm gonna show you what, why. Because I don't believe everybody's reading this book. Look what happens to poor Rid. This is where I kind of draw the line right here because I don't even think a certain character would do this, but look. Slade stabs him, kills him. Can you believe that? I never, I, I don't remember Slade killing kids, but you know what? To come to think of it, you know, Slade can be a, a jerk sometime and, you know, like Ridge is, I think, only eight years old, so it's like, it's different with the Teen Titans, what he was doing with the Titans, but Ridge is only like eight years old or so, so he, he killed the kid, dude, like, come on. Slade gets no love for me for that. 
Not at all. All right, so we move on to uh, independent now. And I have a few independent, three from Dynamite and one from Valiant Comics, uh, Valiant Entertainment. And we're going to go with Dwayne Krasinski. And he's still just doing a bang up job. Manuel Garcia's artwork is brilliant. It's really brilliant in this book. And I'm talking about Bloodshot number nine. Uh, that's a cool cover. Well, look at just look at that. <laughs> um, just really just guns are blazing. <laughs> So Bloodshot is still in the facility of Rising Sun, and he's just trying to get the answers that he wants about himself, who he is, is he real, was his past real, everything like that. And he's still dealing with uh, one of the uh, the operatives in there, um, as well as try to get to uh, his allies. Karen Murphy and and, and uh, Pulse. However, he's dealing with uh, he's dealing with an individual in here uh, who meet, maybe more than meets the eye. She looks like she's just an old woman, but she feeds off of fear, and that gets her stronger. And I'll show you what she where she looks like right here. Um, this big woman right here, if you can see right there. Uh, she looks like a nurse, but she's more than a nurse. And Bloodshot's just having a hard time with her. A lot of things going on. Um, and this is still building up to the Harbinger Wars that are, are coming. Um, that's coming in April, I believe. Um, I probably have to read Harbinger, you know, just to, to keep what's going on with the story. But I, I, I didn't read Harbinger when Valiant first came out. I always stuck with Bloodshot, Exo Man of War, Shadow Man, people like that. Um, so I probably have to read it, you know, later on. You know, but April is the big, you know, Har uh, Harbinger War. It's going to be a 12 issue crossover event, um, which kicks off in April with the Harbinger War one of four. You know, Har uh, Harbinger uh, number 11, then Bloodshot, and things like that. But uh, Dwayne Straczynski just does a fantastic job with uh, Bloodshot. Very good. I enjoyed it. And looking forward to seeing what else he brings to the table. Alright. And we got an annual here. The Bionic Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. It's my phone. Um, we got a... Okay. We have a... Um, Annual. This is the Bionic Man Annual Number One, and this is written by Scott uh, Betty, and artwork is done by Di Di Church Di Rich Smith. I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. And basically, what this is is uh, the the Chinese government tried to send a probe out to Venus. It didn't get there. It landed. It crash landed near the, I say somewhere up in Alaska or Canada. It's kind of in the eyes of the government. And it's, so OSI sends Steve out there to check it out. And this probe is a lot more, once again, I used this word before, more than meets the eye. It's actually sentient. It can move around. It, it moves around. And the Chinese government also sends one of its own operative who is actually in who also as you can see right here he deals with right here this guy right here to look for it and that's basically much it, it wasn't nothing too great it wasn't all that wow but it, it was a it, it wasn't that bad you know for what they were given um, to uncause to not cause an international incident you know, Steve, Steve Austin, and the, um, what was the guy's name? Uh, Yao, G, G, uh, let me see, I'm sure I'm getting his name right. G, G Chin, G Chai, G Chai Ren, that's his name. They both, uh, deal with the probe, and you find out a little something else about this probe, which I don't want to spoil. Like I said, it was a little bit more than I thought. And um, it was good, very good. And 
and last but not, and we go move on to Peter Cannon Thunderbolt number seven. I found out that this is just a like a, a max series. It's only ten issues. It's only this is seven of ten, and in this issue, Peter is in. He's in um. He's in a, a, a where is he again? He's in Egypt. Uh, Jonathan Liu, his artwork is just fantastic. Um, Stephen Darnell and Alex Ross do a very good job writing this, and he's just trying to uncover some facts that are going on in Egypt that he was looking into. Um, the government still wants to try to destroy the dragon that you see right here, which the dragon is actually a part of Peter. And um, that's pretty much it. You know, there's some more in-depth storytelling of it, but it was still good, um, especially the individual that Peter is dealing with in there. That was really good. Since Peter is like really in tune with his mind, he's so enlightened. It was really good to see like this guy play mind games with him, and almost to the point where Peter really got violent, which he's always been trying to be against. Uh, but it was really good indeed. Um, what else I liked about this, and pretty much all the Dynamite books that I have, they got, um, they give you a little sneak preview of Ms. Fury's uh, uh, ongoing series that's coming out later in May, which I'm definitely going to pick up. I love my pulp characters, guys, and Ms. Fury is one of those pulp characters. Here you can see right here, I'll, I'll show you a little bit. Comes in April. Um, sure, can't wait. Uh, if you're reading Mask, she's in that book, but yeah, it's going to be really good. Uh, but yeah, Pete, Pete Cannon Thunderbolt really good. And last but not least, we move on to The Shadow, number 10, um, The Shadow Knows. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love, <laughs> um, love me some Shadow, guys. One of the greatest Pope characters ever. He's one of them. He's up there, guys. And Shadow is still with, uh, his, his boy, Steven. His pilot, Steve uh, Crofton, um, they're in Spain, and they're still trying to prevent a civil war uh, between this guy called El Rey and his disciple, uh, Black Sparrow. Uh, Aaron Campbell's artwork is very good. It's very, it suits where you know the time period of when the shadow is supposed to come out, and uh, Victor Grichler just does a very good job writing this. So, The Shadow, he, Lamont Cranston, The Shadow, quote unquote, basically is trying to prevent this. So he needs to get into the heart of, into the lion's den, in a sense. So, he, he, he gets invited to meet El, El Rey. And he knows it's kind of a trap. He knows it's a trap. He knows that the woman known as Black Sparrow knows that he and the Shadow are the same guy. But it's, I love this part right here where, um, I'll show you right here where she's like, she says to him, you know, we need to check your bags, Mr. Cranston, to make sure that you're not carrying anything. And here's Lamont right here. He's like, oh yeah, sure, yeah, you can check. And he opens up and you see his all oh, his, his guns and everything there, but he's using his abilities to play with the guy's head and he says is everything okay and the guy says yeah he's clean I thought that was really funny um, but just really good storytelling from the shadow from Mr. Gurich and Gl Glitchler I'm saying I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right uh, the shadow just does what the shadow does baby and that's take the bad guys out and um, the shadow knows and evil beware, because the shadow knows. <laughs> but yeah, it was good. All right, so that's it, guys. That's um, that's all the books. Like I said, I will be back next week. Um, God willing, as always. The countdown is still on to my 100th episode. I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to subscribe to me, to Blue Goblin, to Dark Avenger Inc., Dark Avenger Inc. Plus. YT3 Bravo Team, that's the YouTubers core, that's the extension team of the YouTubers core, my group, um, show some love and respect.
to everybody out there um, as always guys you know and um, don't forget to check out what I thought about uh, Katana number two and other than that this Marvin kid saying peace one love stay tuned the king has left his throne no, I'm just messing again guys but other than that you guys take care